Are they in front or behind? I can never remember. Well, it's tomorrow morning in Australia. They should have landed by now. It's all right for some, isn't it? Wanged in a nice little trip down under at the taxpayer's expense. When was the last time you paid any tax? All I'm saying is, it's a fool's errand. That rosy cartwright will be sunning herself on some tropical beach. Then why have I heard now for the past three months? Not even a postcard. An old man in Aidensfield will be the last thing on that young lady's mind, Bernie. Something's happened to her. I can feel it in my water. <laughs> Why has the district nurse gone along for the ride? Well, she's looking for her brother. Oh, don't be soft, David. No, Nurse Cassidy is keeping an eye on PC Mason to stop him falling into the clutches of that CID woman. If you ever change your mind about leaving, leaving me behind Next on the right, Joe. Here we are. All right. Yeah. Good luck, Carol. I've got a feeling I'm going to need it, Joe. You always know how to get hold of it, should the situation arise. Care of the police post at Marilu Bar? I don't know how to say it either. Marilla Bar. Thanks. Let's hope the situation doesn't arise, shall we? Miss Cassidy, that you're looking for a, a very small needle in a very large haystack. You, you must realise that thousands of unwanted children from the slums of England were sent over to Australia after the war. So you haven't managed to trace my brother? Our records show that we did indeed process one Daniel Cassidy in 1948. But do you know where he is? He was sent to St Finbar's. A first-rate farm school out in the bush where poor orphans were taught honest rural trades and decent values. But after he left, age 16... Whereabouts is his school? I've already taken the trouble to make inquiries on your behalf. None of the staff remember the boy you assumed to be your brother, let alone know of his whereabouts now. I'd still like to make contact myself. I don't think that'll be possible. Well, can I at least see his files? Files? This was over 20 years ago. Let's hope the boy made the most of the opportunities that we offered. So many of the riffraff the mother country were only too keen to get rid of when went to the bad, despite the care of the order. Well, I'm sorry. I could be of no more assistance, Miss Cassidy. your new exhibit for the museum, Mrs Pike. Oh, horrible creatures. It's a talking point. Thanks ever so, Mr O'Cart. Tourists. In Marilla Bar. Oh, you mark my words, Mrs Pike. Ten years from now, they'll be flocking here. And what would tourists be wanting with the wallopers? Where do the wise, mate? Wear a hat. Been expecting you, Detective Sergeant Dawson. 
I'm DS Dawson. This is PC Mason. Excuse me. I'm Sergeant Flaherty. Nice little ticket you work yourselves, eh? All expenses paid trip to God's own country. Rosie Cartwright is our friend. And we don't intend to go back until we find out what's happened to her. I can assure you that, Sergeant. That'll be right. Please, don't listen to the terrible things they say about St Finbars. I can't believe those stories are all true. I only just heard of the place. Why don't they want me to find Daniel? There might be something in the school yearbooks. There are copies in our library. Can you show me? I have to be in chapel for the next half hour with all the other brothers. Rosie Cartwright caught the bus west of the Isa. Mount Isa. Lots of nothing out there. So, if she did go missing, then she'd already left my patch. It's a pretty big if, mind. Why do you say that? Rosie was booked on a return flight from Perth. She never turned up, eh? Look, lady. Miss Dawson. Perhaps the kid's visa ran out and she's gone feral. It happens all the time. Who in their right mind would want to go back to Pommyland anyway? Rosie got in touch with her father, asking him to send her travelling money before she got on that plane. He's been depositing cash in her account. We checked. It's not been touched. She sent that wire from the post office right here, three months ago. My inquiries have established that she definitely left Marilaba. Well, I hope you'll have no objection to us making our own inquiries, Sergeant Flaherty. Look, this is a nice, quiet place. Lots of lovely, law-abiding citizens. Provided you treat it with the respect they deserve, I'm going to do nothing to stop you fossicking around. Thank you. I've uh, booked into the Rubbity Dub, the Battleship and Cruiser, the Pub, the Boozer. Crikey, I thought it was you jokers who invented rhyming slang. No, there was a wild colonial boy, Jack Doolan was his name. He ran away from Ireland and to Australia came. He robbed the wealthy squatters and their flocks he did destroy. And a terror to the rich man was the wild colonial boy. Hey. 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 Our English guest? Sarge didn't tell me whether you'd be wanting two singles or a double. Better ask the superior officer. Detective Sergeant Dawson, no less. Two singles, please. And make sure they're the best rooms, with the fans and the fly screens. Certainly. <clears throat> My son will escort you. Carl! This way, folks. Tell me why two pommy cups are fronted up in our town. They're wasting their time, but I'll let them find that out for themselves. Sarge, with them being here, there won't be any problem with this year's race meet, will there? I seriously doubt they're going to be here long enough to upset the equilibrium. <sighs> what do they know about the state's gaming laws? I seriously intend to risk a few dollars myself, Lou. Once I've had a squiz at the runners. Get on your Sarge. Are you from these parts, uh, Cole? Born right here in this hotel. You like it here? Oh, it's paradise. You, uh, that sounds almost like a pond. That's because I'm Scottish. Ah, that's all right, then. You've never been to the old country, then, Cole? <sighs> never been out of state, but I know all there is to know about England. <sighs> Warm beer. So now you do sound like a pond, miss. I live in Yorkshire. Oh, we had a lovely Yorkshire lass living out at Salisbury Dance till about three months ago. Maybe you've come across her, Rosie Cartwright? Uh, 
That was a stupid question. <laughs> Small country's pretty overcrowded, but... No, we do know her. How about that? Yeah, no, she was beautiful, was Rosie. She even helped me uh, fix my fan belt one day when she was in town. Don't come across me and she was another way around an engine. That's why we're here, Cole. We're looking for Rosie. Why? I thought she was going home. This got something to do with that rat bag boyfriend of hers. better than to come in here. Now, you'll get no sly grog from me. Don't put the hard word on me. All the water is some cotton wool and antiseptic. I've got money, brother. I am not your brother. Now, your money's no good here. Back to the reservation. You've got to sir. One more step, and I'll blow your legs off. I'll have the law on you. Oh, is that so? I wonder what the Johns will say when I tell them I found an Abbey shoplifting. Get out. So what's our first step? A trip out to the place where Rosie and Mick McDonald were working. Salisbury Downs, Mr. and Mrs. Patterson. I ought to put in a call to Ashfordley. Let Sergeant Miller know we've arrived in one piece. It's the middle of last night back home. So that's why I feel wrung out. I'll wait till this evening. Why don't you book an international call from the post office? We don't want Flaherty knowing our every move. Well, no one told me about her, the way she lied. Well, no one told me about her, how many people cried. But it's too late to say you're sorry. Rosie, nothing wrong, is there? Why do you say that, Mrs. Patterson? Well, she promised to keep in touch, and I haven't heard a blessed word from her since the day she left. Sorry to bother you. I was wondering if you were the F. Simmons who attended St. Finbar's. No? Fine. OK, thank you. I took a real shine to that young lady. My old fella took on the jackaroo for the season. Mick McDonald? Hmm. Rosie asked me if there was any work for her. So I started her off on the cooking and the cleaning, but so me. She was game for any hard yak of that one. Never worried about rolling up her sleeves and getting her hands dirty. She was a farmer's daughter. Was? Back in Yorkshire, Mrs. Parton. 
And MacDonald? When it comes to men and women, there's usually two sides to every blue. There was trouble between them. He was a good enough worker. Nice as pie most of the time. But he could be trouble when he was full. Well, he was a drinker. Every other night by the end. Oh, listen, love. I've never been one to stick my beak into a domestic. But when it came to blows... He hit Rosie. You saw this? Well, not as such. But the ruse in the paddock and the kookaburras in the trees would have heard the ding-dong. I told my old man to pay him off the next morning. And what about Rosie? I reckon she wasn't ready to go home. She wanted some good memories of Oz. Had a hankering to climb the rock. That's why I was expecting a postcard. When was the last time you saw Rosie? I drove her to the bus stop in town myself. Did you actually see her get on the bus, Mrs Patterson? Well, no. I had to get back to the property, didn't I? I left her outside the post office. But nothing could have happened to her in Marilla Bar. Could it? <laughs> Mrs. Pike, have you got any suggestions? Alf, it's Joe, calling from Australia. Good day, mate. How's Skippy? <laughs> I ran him over. Look, put me through to Sergeant Miller. Every second's costing a fortune. Mason, what have you got? Something. Jet lag. What's he saying, Alf? It's about Mick McDonald. That wild colonial lad's not all he's cracked up to be. Any word from Joe? Who is it? The manager, Miss Cassidy. You know Dr Cunningham? About some uh, advert you placed. Oh, really? What kind of services might you be offering in my motel, Missy? Don't be so stupid. Did he leave a number? We need to hold MacDonald in for a little chat. What's he done, Sergeant? Weatherby, ask him politely if he wouldn't mind taking the time to come down to the station and answer a few questions. Yes, Sergeant. Dog back to life. How's about another elu? Two pints, please. Uh, listen, love, why don't I bring you a couple of nice chill pots into the lounge, eh? Are you refusing to serve me because I'm a woman? Don't tell me this is the law of the land. Well, not exactly, no, but we don't want to frighten the horses, do we? Miss MacDonald! I'd like you to accompany me to Ashford Lee Police Station. It's just a bet, mate. I think you know very well. Come with me, please. Come on, Rachel. When in Oz. This is a point of principle, Joe. You're not going to back me up? You can tell a man who boozes by the company he chooses. And I have no intention of remaining in the presence of these drongos while there's a lady present for once. <laughs> Madam, in a spirit of hospitality and hands across the sea, 
Would you allow me to accompany you to the refined atmosphere of the ladies' lounge? If you would allow me to buy you a drink, Mr... Urquhart. With pleasure. Well, you're not going to want this. Dr Cunningham? Yes, I'm the one who placed the notice. You do? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. When can we meet? Queen Adelaide Tea Rooms? Wonderful. Would you mind stepping in here, please? Is this about Rosie? This way, please. times. I went north and she took off travelling. Amicable separation, was it? We split up. It happens. By mutual agreement? I love that girl. You know why I came back to England? I thought she was going to be back here and I was kind of hoping she might find it in her heart to forgive me. I was going to propose to her. Do you know an Ada Patterson? Mm, of course I do. Me and Rosie worked on our old man's property. Mrs. Patterson has stated that your behaviour towards Rosie Cartwright could only be described as physically abusive. Has she? The old cow. <gasps> Banana bender. Winner of the Nambour sweep. Well, look, he'll wipe the floor with the rest of the field. What's a cold with his form doing in our little picnic race? I won't say we didn't have our problems, or a couple dozen. And you thought that gave you the right to hit her? You lot, you, you think the sun shines out of your little local girl? Well, let me tell you, you never knew her like I did. You never saw what... <sighs> what she put me through. So you admit it. You were violent. If I was, she drove me to it. I swear, Alf. If that, if that shearer, if he's on the hair of roses, I'll calm down, Jeff. You're not telling me why you dragged me in here about an argument that happened three months ago and 12,000 flaming miles away. All you have to do is to account for your whereabouts the day after you were sacked from Salisbury Downs. Why are you asking me? I don't know. What's happened to Rosie? Why isn't she back here? You just tell me where you were the day after she got onto that bus. You are the advance party. Ten years from now, folks from your part of the world will be flocking here for their holidays. And it just so happens, I own this bonza block of land. Just right for tourist development. All it needs is water and electricity. We have a very heavy schedule, Mr Urquhart. Do yourselves a favour. Get in on the ground floor. I hope you're not thinking of leaving the district. I may wish to talk to you again. You get a lease off me, a lift back to the farm. What do you think this is? A taxi firm? I can give you a lift as far as Edensfield, lad. That's six miles away from my billet. <coughs> Take it or leave it. Why have you let him go, Sergeant? We have a telex to send to Australia, younger. If Mark Patterson said it happened, it happened. I'm not disputing. And if your girl had had the sense to lodge a complaint, I'd have been more than willing to show that mongrel what I think of a man who resorts to his fists when his mouth would suffice. But she didn't. Mrs Patterson never saw Rosie get on that bus. Granted. But your problem is I have found another reliable witness who did see Miss Cartwright get on the bus and leave town for sure. Cassidy? 
Dr. Cunningham at your service. Fancy a Devonshire? I suppose so. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. She bought a postcard, a stamp for Great Britain. She wrote it, then she gave it to me to post while she went for the bus. Was there anybody with her, Mrs Pike? Any man? Not that I saw. But you definitely did see her board that bus. And the bus set off with Rosie on it. Not that it got very far, as I recall. Well, that was the day the big rain came. First we'd had all year. The day Gindalong Creek broke its banks. I'm what you might call one of uh, St Finbar's success stories. <laughs> there aren't too many of us, believe you me. What kind of medicine are you in, Dr Cunningham? Well, I'm no quack. <laughs> I'm a doctor of philosophy. Excuse me, but you look a lot older than my brother. He can't be any more than 30. I never said I was in the same year as Daniel, no. <laughs> but my mate Marty was. I gave him a bell after I saw your advert. And he remembers him well. He was in the footy team with your Daniel. Wasn't it cricket? A real old rounder was Daniel Cassidy. Well, the bus would have been held up till the emergency services cleared the road next morning. What did you all do that night? Well, someone would have called home and gone back to town. Someone stayed at the roadhouse, which is what I did. Drop a dump. And remember that smile. Don't get too many English travellers. That's Rosie Cartwright. Did she stay at the roadhouse? Can't say for sure. What I do know is that she never got back on my bus when I set off next day. You're certain of that? Hmm? That didn't bother you? Well, why would it? She had an open touring ticket, as I recall. Besides, she wasn't the only one of the passengers who dropped off. I reckon maybe someone must have given her a ride back into Marilla Bar. Now, I'm going to have to make up time, folks. Be seeing yous. So Mick still could have gotten a hold of Rosie? Yeah. I'd like to know where McDonald was when that bus was stopped. Does your friend know where my brother is now? He's making inquiries. He suggests that we might meet up later. Oh, well, that'd be great, Dr Cunningham. We could come over to your motel, uh, shall we say, this afternoon? Yes, please. What's your room number, Carol? Eleven. Okie dokie. Ah, no, uh, it's not such a bright idea. No, Martin's Holden's in for a service. Easier to meet in town. Why not here again? About to? Of course. Oh, no, no, Doctor, I'll get this. I do appreciate what you're doing for me. My very great pleasure. Turo. Bye. Now that's fine. You'll send me over a copy. Sergeant Flaherty, Marillabar Police Station. This um, telex from your Sergeant Miller says that Mick McDonald swears blind that he drove straight up north to a tobacco farm on the Tablelands. Well, that was the foreman of the plantation that took him on. He's sending me the employment records. McDonald's story checks out. What did I tell you? You're barking up the wrong gum tree. Thank you, Sergeant. Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. And I feel like I'm clinging to a cloud. I can't understand I get misty just holding your hand Walk my way and a thousand violins begin to play for it might be the sound of your hello Music I hear, I get misty. Maybe Flaherty has a point. 
Maybe Rosie has gone AWOL in the outback. Who in the right minds would want to go back to Pommyland? Ranger, you... I know what he means. It's important now. We know this was Rosie's last confirmed sighting. So, trip to the roadhouse, see if anyone saw her there. Blowies off the windshield. It's a nice Falcon. The high car. I'll be on business. Sure, yeah. He comes to Jindalong for pleasure. What are you doing out here at this time of night? I couldn't sleep. I haven't had a decent night's sleep for weeks. I've got a bad feeling about all this. When did you ever have a good feeling about anything, Bernie? Just go to bed. Getting wound up like this, it'll only make matters worse. We're not going to see her again, you know. Two burgers, please. No, mate. Well, does the same just... Uh... Yeah, I can do you uh, meat pies. They're cold, but... I'm Joe Mason. Jack Meredith. No secret. Jack. Do you remember the day the river was flooded? When the bus got stranded? Why wouldn't I? This business we've had for months. Well, I'm looking for an English girl. Did she stay here that night? What's this got to do with you? She's a friend of mine. Never clapped eyes on her, mate. Was there anyone else working here that day? This girl stay here when the creek bursts its banks? No, Dad. You sure about that? Would I forget serving breakfast to a good-looking bird like that? Would you mind if we saw your register? What do you think this is, mate? The outback blessed Hilton. Monday morning feels so bad. Everybody seems to know. Coming Tuesday, I feel better. That's it then. Let's see what more we can do here. I think we're going to have to cast our net wider. Oh, 
wager a tenner on banana vendor to win at starting price odds. Play the game, Urquhart. There's hmm? five other runners. What's so special about this banana bender? Tried and tested, that's what. Uh, <laughs> word to the wise. After a glorious career, I grant you, that horse is past it. They're only bringing it out here to give it a run before they put it out in the long yard. Advice from you is like a reverse barometer, you old brown snake. Let's make it 20. Oh. Hmm. Yes, Sarge. Banana Bender. I consider this not so much of a flutter as a dead cert investment. 25 on the nose. I'll have you this time, Lou. And the whole town with me. Anything to report? Why am I not surprised? So you're believing us? There is one last thing you can do for us, Sergeant. I would like to satisfy myself there have been no other reports of women missing in the area. Nothing of the sort in the last four years since I've been stationed here. But what about before you came to Marilla Bar? It would set my mind at rest if before we went you had a look through the records. Stone the crows. Anything to get you out of my hair. They could have given us a fair warning. It's the busiest time of the year. All the rooms are booked for the Marilla Bar picnic race, you know. But, uh, put a cot up for your friend. The question is, uh, which room? Carol! Put it in Joe's room. Looks like our jolly swagman's alibi has checked out. Best let him know he's off the hook. No, not you. Younger. I'm sure I can trust you to deal with this professionally. I must be a complete and utter idiot. I've been conned. I've been robbed and I'm no nearer finding someone who might or might not be my brother in the first place. It's OK, Carol. You're with us now. Hang on, Joe. We've still got work to do. Sorry, I'm so busy thinking about my own problems, I didn't even ask. Any news about Rosie? No, not much. All we've achieved is eliminating McDonald from the frame. Joe, this is police business. Well, I'm glad of that. I could never really believe Mick was a bad one. Well, then I wish you'd have shared that valuable insight with us before we wasted our time coming out here. <sighs> what do you want with me this time? to inform you that you've been eliminated from inquiries. Have you found Rosie? No. <laughs> Rosie told me you carried a torch for her younger, but it was me she went off with. If anything has happened to her, I'll still hold you personally responsible. I'm warning you, MacDonald. You might not think it, but when I'm out of this uniform, I'm a man like any other. Not just a copper. We've got work to do, Joe. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Can I help? No. If I were you, I'd take this opportunity to top up your town. Fine. I know when I'm surplus to requirements. Might as well take a dip in the Pacific Ocean while I'm here at least. Good idea. Watch out for sharks.
Don't ever say I haven't got your best interests at heart. And what do you know? I might have come up with something for you after all. About five years ago, a Mrs Adams made an inquiry about a student who'd been staying with her, a friend of her daughter, Janet. Now, it seems that this young lady left Maroolabar for sure, but never made it to her home in Frio. From Antle, Western Australia. Near Perth. Well, Rosie was supposed to fly back from Perth. Blonde like Rosie. Sarah Wagner. Was she ever found? That I don't know. And if she did go missing? 3,000 miles between here and the Indian Ocean, mate. That's right off my patch. Is this Mrs Adams still around? No, she's dead. But her daughter still lives in the town. She's a Janet Murray now. She's married to a great fishing mate of mine. His name's Trent. Can fix anything electrical. Can we go and see her? No, you go and have some brekkie. I'm going to give her a bell. Earth for a purpose. I never did find out the reason for the box jellyfish. Jellyfish? Almost too small to see, big enough to kill. I'm so sorry. I thought you were trying to attack me. Yeah, well, beautiful blonde woman, scary black fellow. Thank you so much. You live. I'm Carol from England. I'm Nev from here before this place was called Australia. I've come halfway around the world on a wild goose chase. I can't even go for a dip. Oh, sure you can. But just over the Pacific Ocean this time of the year, you best to stick to the fresh water. Then you best to watch out for the crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, there's a waterfall up near my mob's place. Got me ute up there. You want me to drive you out for a swim, sister? Oh, um... Ah, oh, OK. I understand. Actually... Yeah. Why not? Thanks. Let me wander north to the homestead Way out further on there to roam By a gully You many of these creatures around here? Oh, more every year. But this is the big daddy of them all. The cane toad. Perfect symbol of man's arrogance in the face of nature. And in a few years from now, these things will be all over Australia. As you sow, so shall you reap. What is this evil stuff doing here? This land was free before barbed wire. By the way, you know anyone by the name of Carol Cassidy? Thanks. Ah, chops and eggs. Kitchen's closing. Yeah, sounds great. What about your girlfriend, Joe? Does she want any tucker? Girlfriend? The, uh, the blonde. Carol. Thing is, there was this, uh, weird hippy dippy bloke with a ponytail, would you credit? He, uh, he was asking about her. Well, I haven't seen Carol since she went down to the beach. The beach? What's she down there? She went for a swim. In jellyfish season? Anyone who's not a total glan knows there's no swimming allowed. These 
missing females could be anywhere between here and the Indian Ocean. It's not as if any bodies were ever found around here. Do you think he knows anything? Somebody knows. Somebody got to Rosie. Somewhere near here. Hey! 